that I'm going to declare on your show, there will be a federal election and it will be called in August and it will take place in September. So I think you can take that to the bank. Uh, I, obviously, some things could intervene, a world crisis or, or something. But I think uh, it's like uh, you have to understand uh, a political party is like an army. And once you set in motion the mobilization of an army, it's very hard to stop that mobilization. And same thing with a political party. Once you start to say to the troops, okay, we're going to be in election mode, start renting space for your election campaign, uh, you know, start, start uh, getting your campaign manager uh, in line. It's very hard to say, oh, sorry, just kidding. Uh, but we'll do this in a few months again. No, no, they're, they're going into an election. Tell me how you're seeing this, Tony, which, which you know, uh, as you've said, this is a bit like a game of chess almost. And what pieces are on the board right now? What's 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 a be what's apparent to you? I guess. Yeah, I, I'd say a few things. Obviously, uh, Justin Trudeau feels that uh, he's got some wind in his back uh, with the lower COVID cases. Uh, the fi finally, the delivery of the vaccine is going very smoothly, uh, and uh, the hurt uh, of the economic cost hasn't really bit yet because the spigot uh, of money flowing from Ottawa is still ongoing. Uh, the CERB money is going to end in the fall. Uh, people, you know, the, uh, the the help with the rent money is going to end. So all of that stuff's in the future. So he, I guess he's figuring you might as well go now before that starts to bite. Uh, for the other parties, they, they've been anticipating this election call for many months now. Uh, you know, uh, Aaron O'Toole has already has uh, his war room engaged uh, what is called the war room that's the kind of the issues management people if you will uh, and uh, Jagmeet Singh has been going out and about uh, quite uh, quite steadily through the summer I guess the only political organization that is not ready for this right now is the Green Party which seems to continue its uh, internal implosion so how do you see this moving ahead now Tony I mean we've seen a couple announcements today we had um, you know, we had an infrastructure announcement on internet expansion, um, you know, again, seems to be a key placement of, of uh, you know, campaigning in a, in a sort of secret sense. And uh, the recent announcement of, of having uh, Mary Simon as the uh, new governor general, the first indigenous governor general in history, again, uh, almost seems like a well-placed move on the liberals behalf to, to do this. Oh, 100%. They, they've got all of their, if you look at it as chess pieces, as you suggested, James, yeah, they, they're, they're beyond moving the pawns now. They're into the moving the rooks and the knights uh, and the bishops. Uh, they're, they're starting to really engage. And uh, obviously, uh, it would have been bizarre to, to call an election without a governor general being in place, because that's who you send uh, the instructions to dissolve parliament to. So that's now looked after. Uh, and uh, I think it's this weekend that the Liberal Party is holding a mass event online uh, where they're, uh, they're getting all their, all of their campaign managers and candidates together. They're going to have some rah-rah by uh, Justin Trudeau and uh, basically everybody, everybody's going to be saying, yeah, we're ready, we're ready to go, let's do this. So again, all pretty telltale indicators. And uh, the other opposition parties are doing exactly the same, the same thing. They're getting their candidates in place. They're uh, getting their war chests in place. So uh, this is what we've got going on for the uh, late summer here in Canada. So Tony, uh, the question is, why now? Well, this is a question that Justin Trudeau is, that, that is gonna be the very first question that the media ask him. Uh, and uh, the first two days, first three days of the election is gonna be, why now? You're just doing this because uh, you, you feel ahead in the polls. Uh, there's, no, there's no reason he's gonna say, He's, he's going to say, well, Parliament isn't working. And then Jagmeet Singh is going to say, I would have backed you. Uh, so, you know, why are you doing this? Right. And in fact, Jagmeet Singh had a had a day of, of, of media saying, uh, asking the governor general to not grant the election. Right. Uh, so so I think that's going to be the first couple of days of the election call, which it always is when it's called early is to say, you know, why are you doing this now? Then that'll fade. I mean, that, that is not going to be, I guarantee you, that will not be an election issue on election day, why we're having the election, because people get, they, they get angry that the election's called. And then they say, well, I guess we're into it now. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we're going to have to make a choice on, on who best to lead the country in the future. 
So let's talk about that. I mean, obviously, the liberal goal is to get out of the minority back into the majority again in terms of their leadership in, in Parliament Hill. But uh, where do the other parties stand? Where does uh, because you know Aaron O'Toole is still very new on the scene. Uh, Jugmeet Singh um, historically has not had a, a great standing in Canada in terms of votes. So where do they stand right now from your perspective? I think it's been really tough for Aaron O'Toole. It's tough being leader of the opposition in the best of times, and this ain't the best of times. Uh, he's he's lost the ability to command attention through question period because we really haven't had a question period that's mm -hmm. worked in the traditional way and so he's been a new leader during covid very tough to get attention he'll get attention during the election though and so that'll be his moment to shine or it'll be his moment where he falters i, I will wait and see but he's got he's got a very detailed plan for the 37 days of election day uh, election writ and uh, he'll have to execute that plan and i think his message is going to be look you know uh, trudeau let us down during covid uh but you know i'm here for the future whose plan do you trust that will be the best for our economic future i think that's going to be the value proposition that uh, Aaron O'Toole is going to offer. Jagmeet Singh, Singh is going to be an interesting case because I think my, my analysis is that uh, Justin Trudeau coalesced the progressive vote in this country, stole some votes from the Greens, stole some votes from the NDP, uh, starting in 2015 and said, I'm your progressive candidate and I can deliver on electoral reform, I can deliver on indigenous rights, I can deliver on the environment. Uh, and I'm going to legalize pot while I'm at it, right? So that was his that was his message. He got a lot of votes from the NDP and Greens for that. If I'm a progressive looking at Justin Trudeau now, I'm thinking to myself, well, I gave you my vote in 2015. I gave you my vote in 2019. You really haven't delivered. You haven't delivered on Indigenous. You haven't delivered on the environment. You certainly haven't delivered on electoral reform. Uh, you know, I'm not going to give you, I'm going to look at Jagmeet Singh this time. Uh, I'm not saying that's a majority of people. But all he needs is five or 10% of that progressive vote to move away from Justin Trudeau to Jagmeet Singh. That's a big bonanza for Jagmeet Singh. It, and it certainly denies Justin Trudeau a majority mm -hmm. and it may be even more costly than that. So that's the thing I'm looking for uh, in the early stages of this election campaign, how good Jagmeet Singh is to gain some progressive votes. My last question here, Tony, is uh, is about the most contentious issue that any party has ever faced in the history of Canada, which is COVID-19. And it has really split Canadians. Um, we have anti-vaxxers in this country. We have a, a huge amount of anti-vaxxers in this country that don't feel that they're, they feel their rights are being stepped on. They don't feel that they've been listened to. How do these parties deal with these with these voters? And, and you know, what angle could they possibly take to try to gain their trust again? So, um, you know, they're not going to vote for Justin Trudeau, let's put it that way. So that's the first thing. So this really is a question of, of how delicately Aaron O'Toole deals with this because Aaron O'Toole is not an anti-vaxxer mm. uh, and he supported the lockdowns, uh, but he has also constantly be, been demanding of the liberal government, what's your plan to get back to normalcy? What's your plan to get us out of lockdowns, to get us to a place where we can comfortably be amongst one another again. So that's kind of been his position. You're gonna have nipping at his heels, the People's Party of Canada, Maxime Bernier, uh, anti-lockdown. I don't think Bernier has been anti-vax, but he certainly has gained a lot of traction amongst the, those kinds of people. Uh, and um, so I, I think if I'm Aaron O'Toole, you don't wanna to be too close to those people anyway, because I think uh, you know the great majority of Canadians are obviously pro-vaccination. I think it's 80% of Ontarians uh, at least have had one dose and over 60% have had two doses. So you, you got to fish in the, in the, in where the fish are, as I like to say. Uh, and um, so that's, that's the, that's the situation for Aaron O'Toole. I, 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 I question whether COVID is going to be a, a big issue in the campaign. I think it's going to be about the future rather than about what we just went through. I think people are looking to the future. They don't want to think about COVID anymore. They're sick and tired of it. So uh, I'd be surprised if it's a major issue. Well, I, just a final word, I guess it would be in Trudeau's best interest to try to avoid that subject completely, right? Because he's been called out so many times on it. Yeah, no, I, I think from Trudeau's perspective, though, he thinks he did a pretty darn good job. Mm. Uh, he uh, And he thinks it goes to his competency issue. 
right? So he, he's saying, hey, you know, I did the best I could and it was pretty darn good. I made sure people got paid. I made sure we got vaccine, you know, and we're the best in the G20 and vaccine uptake now or whatever it is. So I don't think it's necessarily a negative for him, um, but I also think he's smart enough or his advisors are smart enough at least to say, okay, you got to take the win there as, as best we can. Yeah, it's 50-50, but we, if we get 50% of the votes, we're, we're laughing. Um, and say, okay, what's our vision for the future? And that's where I think the big battleground is going to be.